Hi, I'm Katie Lee, CGC, Certified Genetic Counselor, and welcome back to my channel. Today is Fertility Friday, and today I'm going to be covering a really important topic, which is what type of testing options do you have to utilize on your miscarriage tissue, tissue following either a natural miscarriage or a DNC? So first of all, I want to say if you're here because you're experiencing a miscarriage right now or because you have a DNC scheduled in a few days, I am so, so sorry. I'm hoping that I can help explain exactly what the options are for this type of testing so that you can have a thorough discussion with your doctor and make sure that if you're interested in testing on your tissue from your miscarriage, that you are getting the best testing possible. There are two different types of testing that can be done on tissue from a miscarriage that are commonly ordered. One is pathology. So that essentially means examining the tissue that was um, expelled with a miscarriage or that came out with the DNC procedure, and it's done by a pathologist. The second is the genetic testing, and that's really what this video is going to focus on. The genetic testing is te testing, again, using that tissue from the miscarriage to figure out if there was a genetic difference like a missing or extra chromosome or multiple missing or extra chromosomes that cause the miscarriage to happen. There are different forms, different methods of performing this genetic testing, and some are better than the others. So that's what I want to cover today to make sure that you can talk to your doctor about getting the very best genetic testing to get the most conclusive results. So first, let me briefly cover the pathology because I think a lot of people get confused when they see their pathology reports come back after their miscarriage and there's no genetic information on there. Pathology reports often do come back just, you know, maybe two, three, four days after a DNC is performed. And usually what it says, I'll go ahead and show mine here. This is, to be frank, kind of the least gross, least descriptive pathology re report I could find for my products of conception that were tested. So what is being tested? A uterine products of conception biopsy. And what did they see? chorionic villi, which is essentially part of the placenta, and decidualized stroma, which is like skin cells of the uterus. So that was the diagnosis that's made. Really, the goal of pathology is to identify whether there might be one of those rare cases like um, concern for an ectopic pregnancy or a molar pregnancy, cases where there is really specific follow-up that's needed for the patient. So just to rule those out, that's the goal. So there is nothing about genetics because this is not a genetic report. So you want to be really clear when you're talking about your doctor about the plan for testing the tissue and make sure that the plan is not just pathology if you're also interested in genetic testing results. Now let's talk a little bit more about the genetic testing that can be done on tissue from a miscarriage. And there's a lot of different names for this genetic testing. Um, it's often referred to as POC, Products of Conception Genetic Testing. You'll also hear the use of the technical name, so the actual methods that are being used to perform the genetic analysis. And as I mentioned, there are different forms and some forms are better than the others. The old school technique, which is not as good, is usually referred to as cytogenetic analysis or karyotyping of the tissue. With cytogenetic analysis or karyotyping, uh, essentially what's done is the cells from the tissue are cultured or they're grown in a Petri dish and then pictures of the chromosomes in the cells are made to see if there's extra or missing copies of any of the chromosomes or a full set of chromosomes. And that can tell you if there are chromosome differences that that was likely the cause of the miscarriage. Now the big, big problem with karyotyping, actually there's two, um, is that one, sometimes that cell culture, it fails and the sample cannot be used. You just simply cannot get a result. The other problem, which is a very big problem, is that sometimes when you get a miscarriage sample, especially if it's an earlier miscarriage, like, you know, within the first eight weeks or so, you cannot determine whether the sample that was received in the laboratory was a sample from mom. So like a uterine sample from the person who was carrying the pregnancy or whether it was a fetal cell sample. And what that means is that sometimes a result comes back when you do karyotyping. And the result says 46XX. 46XX means that 
the result of the cells that were tested showed 46 chromosomes, which is normal, and two Xs, which means that the tissue testing was biologically female or XX. Now, the problem with that is with karyotype, that old school technique, which is unfortunately still very commonplace, you cannot tell whether the tissue was maternal in origin or fetal in origin. So it is impossible to know if that is a true result for your, for your miscarriage for the baby that miscarried. Unfortunately, I hear from patients all the time that their OB ordered this karyotyping testing and it led to a result like this that was inconclusive. It showed 46XX, but we are left wondering whether it showed 46XX because it was maternal cells that were tested or because the fetus that miscarried was indeed a, a normal female result. That's why when I had miscarriages, I chose not to do karyotyping. I wanted to do the newer and better type of testing, which is called chromosome microarray using SNP or using single nucleotide polymorphism technology using SNPs. And it's a long, long name, but there are a few different brands that offer this type of testing. The brand that I chose to use, and I do not work for this company, is Natera's test, which is called Anora. And this test is fantastic because it will use a sample of blood or saliva from the person who carried the pregnancy. And using that sample, it will compare it to the sample of tissue collected from the miscarriage. And it can determine and confirm whether that sample is indeed a fetal sample and whether this test is a true reflection of what was going on with that baby that miscarried. Or it can tell you whether the sample that was collected was actually tissue from the mom. And I've had this test done twice. The first time on a miscarriage that happened at home where I collected sample. And I found out that I had it had maternal cell contamination. So the sample I sent in was not actually a fetal sample. The second time I had a sample sent in, it was following a DNC, a procedure done by my physician to remove the tissue to remove the products of conception. They sent in the sample for the Anora testing and I got a result. The tissue was a normal male pregnancy. I'm going to show my results now. So this was an Anora POC result that I sent in after a natural miscarriage at home. So I collected tissues after about a six week miscarriage or so, maybe six and a half week miscarriage, I believe. And I collected in a sample cup that Natera can provide. Your doctor's office should be able to provide one if they're willing to order the test. Unfortunately, because it was an early miscarriage, it can happen that the sample you collect just happens to include maternal cells, like cells from your uterine lining. And it did not contain a fetal DNA sample. So they knew that from using my saliva sample that I sent in along with the kit, they could tell that all of the cells analyzed in the sample were unfortunately maternal. So I don't get an explanation for whether this pregnancy loss had a chromosome issue or not. That is just something that can happen sometimes when you're testing an early pregnancy loss. This is my result from the second time I had the Anora completed just a couple of months ago following a DNC. I had the DNC performed by my physician after... Um, I went in for my seven week and a few day ultrasound and it was determined I had a blighted ovum. That just means an empty gestational sac. So by that point in time, a fetal pole and a heart rate should be visualized, but it wasn't. So that embryo was not growing normally, unfortunately. Um, now in this case, so you can get a result on a blighted ovum, first of all, which I think some people think you can't because you can test the gestational sac. The lab can use that to get a result. And you can see here, my result is that it was a normal male embryo. Chromosomes are not an explanation for why this embryo did not develop typically. So I am left without an explanation again, which is just unfortunately common. Now, what you often can see here, because about 50% of miscarriages are due to chromosome imbalances, is you might see that the embryo or the baby that was tested, it had an extra an extra chromosome like a trisomy 21 or Down syndrome result, an extra copy of chromosome 16, or maybe a missing chromosome. So that's the type of result that you can see here. Of note, with Anora, you will find out the sex of the pregnancy. That's something not everyone wants to know. And then in addition, you can find out the parent of origin. So if there is a chromosome error, you can figure out if the error came from the egg or the sperm cell. So to summarize, if you've recently had a miscarriage, these are the things you can consider asking your doctor. One, do you recommend testing on the tissue from my miscarriage? 
whether I pass it naturally at home or with a procedure like a DNC in your office. Two, what type of testing are you planning to order? Will it be both pathology and genetic testing? And if you're ordering genetic testing, is it going to be the cytogenetic testing or karyotype, or will it be chromosome microarray? And another way that you can get at that question is saying, is the testing microarray, so will it be ruling out maternal cell contamination? Will that testing be able to confirm that the sample we sent in is indeed fetal in origin? Okay. And unfortunately, a lot of OBGYNs that I've worked with sometimes aren't sure about this. So it may be best to say, I'm interested in this specific test. And again, the test that I said I was interested in to my OBGYN was the Anora test by Natera. And you can look them up. I'll link their website below and they can, your doctor can call them. You can call them and request a kit from them, assuming your doctor is willing to order from them. And then the third question you might want to ask is, when can I expect these results? And I can tell you in my experience, um, Anora test, for example, that's supposed to come back in about one week or so from the time the laboratory receives the results. So it should be pretty quick. Now, your doctor may not be able to get the results to you within that one week. So even though that result is sitting at your doctor's office, unless you're annoying, which I think if you're a good patient, you're probably pretty annoying calling them, you may end up waiting a little bit longer, like two weeks or three weeks to hear back what those results are. If you do end up having a test like Anora ordered, for you by your provider, I would be calling back about one, one and a half weeks after the sample was the sample was provided to check in about the results. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Please hang in there and let me know what questions you have about the testing. I might make another video to really go into detail about all of the things that, for instance, the Anora test does because I barely touched on that. It's not just looking for extra missing chromosomes. It can actually look for other genetic differences too. I wanted to keep this really basic because I bet a lot of you end up here just through search because you're trying to figure out what to do next. And I don't want to provide too much information, but if you'd be interested in a more detailed video, please let me know below and I'll go ahead and make one in the future. Bye guys. Hi, it's Katie. I'm editing. I just wanted to add in here throughout this video, I talk about my tissue that was tested and refer to miscarriages as tissue. For me, that's just what's most comfortable because all of my miscarriages were identified, you know, before there was a fetal heart rate. And I don't really think of them as babies, but absolutely had I had a pregnancy further along that miscarried, I probably would think of it as a baby. So if that offends you, I'm sorry, you can call your miscarriage um, tissue or the baby or the fetus or whatever feels comfortable to you. That was the last little thing I wanted to add in. If you made it through this whole video, thank you so much for watching and wishing you the very best. Bye.